everyone and welcome to the study tube project my name is tolu and i am a first year medical student and i wanted to teach you guys more about the human body in particular the spine the spine otherwise known as the vertebral column is made up of around 33 bones these bones work to support the upper parts of our body to allow movements such as bending over and twisting around and so on Throughout this video, I'm going to refer to the bones of the spinal column as vertebra or vertebrae if I'm referring to more than one. I'm also going to include a couple of terms that you may not have come across before, but I will explain what they are throughout this video. The spinal column is composed of five regions. The cervical spine, the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, the sacral spine, which is otherwise known as the sacrum and the coccygeal spine, which is shortened to coccyx. The vertebrae in each of these regions are numbered to help with identifying them. The first region is the cervical spine, which is made up of seven bones. So C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6 and C7. The role of C1 to C7 is to provide an attachment point for your skull as well as support the weight of it. It allows movements like flexion and extension and axial rotation. I'll go through that one more time. Flexion, extension and axial rotation. So flexion and extension is basically what allows you to nod your head and axial rotation is basically what helps you to shake your head like, like if you're saying no. Compared to other regions of the spine, there is relatively a lot more motion. The reason why there is so much more movement in the cervical spine is because of two important vertebrae, C1 and C2, which are also known as the atlas and the axis respectively. Here's a diagram showing what these two vertebrae look like. The development of C1 and C2 is actually quite interesting. The structure you can see called the dens all actually came from what is known as the vertebral body of C1. And the vertebral body is literally just the thick segment of bone that forms at the front of the vertebra. However, during development, it fuses with C2. And it's the dens that acts as the point of rotation for C1. So sort of like a pivot. If you were to fracture the dens, which does happen, this can restrict movement of the neck. The type of fracture depends on the extent of the damage and also how it affects your overall stability. The fractures range from type 1 to type 3, with type 2 actually being the most unstable. In order to help limit the excess movement of the cervical spine, we have ligaments, which are basically short, tough bands of connected tissue that connect bones together. One thing though that I find really cool is that if you flex your head forward, you can actually feel C7 at the base of your neck. It'll be the prominent bump. It's pretty cool. Now, before we move on, I just wanted to show you the structure of C3 to C7. It has a lot of features like a spinous process, a transverse process, a foramen, a pedicle, and so on. But if you wanna know more about these details, feel free to do some research because there are so many resources available online. The next region of the spine is the thoracic spine, and it is made up of 12 bones, numbered one to 12. So we have T1 to T12. The thoracic spine articulates with our ribs, and by articulate, I just mean that they join up to the ribs. This occurs at three different sites on the thoracic vertebra. The transverse process, which is a small bony projection on either side of the vertebra, the superior vertebral notch and the inferior vertebral notch, which are just concave indentations on the upper and lower surfaces of what is called the pedicle. And the pedicle is basically a short projection that comes off the back of the vertebral body. Oof, that was a lot, and I know it was a lot. So feel free to go back and go over it just to help it sink in your mind a little bit better. The movement of the thoracic spine includes rotation and limited lateral flexion and extension. So rotation is just that, and lateral flexion and extension is just literally moving your body left and right, like so. The structure of a thoracic vertebra is very similar to that of the cervical spine. However, the main difference is that the vertebral bodies are somewhat heart-shaped and the spinous processes, which are the bony projections at the back of the vertebra, are more downward facing. Next, we have the lumbar spine. And this region is composed of five bones labeled L1 to L5. 
The vertebral bodies of the lumbar region are relatively big and this is to help support the weight of the upper part of our body, also known as the trunk. The movements at this level of the spine are limited to flexion and extension, so moving forward and back. The spinous processes, which like I said before, were the bony projections at the back of the vertebra can be felt or palpated on your spine if you just feel your back. Quickly moving on to the sacral region or the sacrum. This is quite an interesting structure because it's formed by the fusion of five vertebrae. So here, yeah, look at this diagram and check it out for yourself. The sacral region is connected to the pelvis and it works to strengthen and stabilise it. The last region of the spine is the coccygeal region, otherwise known as the coccyx. The number of bones in this region varies from three to five, and you may know it as the tailbone, which is funny because it's actually made up of more than one bone. Interesting. So those are actually all the regions of the spine, and I'll run through them again, just so you've got it in your head. So we've got the first seven bones of the spine, which is referred to as the cervical region. Then we have 12 bones which make up the thoracic region, five more bones which is the lumbar region, some fused bones which is the sacrum, and three to five bones that make up the coccyx. The spine itself has a natural S-shaped curve. The cervical and lumbar region have an inward curve which is called lordosis, whereas the thoracic and if you want to include it the sacral region has an outward curve which is referred to as kyphosis. This means that the pattern of curves goes lordosis, kyphosis, lordosis, kyphosis. So many sisses. But to help me remember the pattern, I just say loci, loci. So lordosis, kyphosis, lordosis, kyphosis. Sometimes if you aren't careful, the alignment of your spine can be altered, or sometimes it can develop a misalignment as you grow up. This includes a condition called scoliosis, which is, which is actually an abnormal curve from side to side. And I think that's all I want to talk about for the spine for today. The human body is so complex and for that reason I think it deserves to be learnt and appreciated, which is pretty much part of the reason why I chose to study medicine as a subject. If you want to learn more about the human body there are so many resources available online, there are so many diagrams and videos you can watch so I encourage you to check them out to just develop your learning about the human body. If you need any help remembering any of the terms I've mentioned in this video, watch it back and again look at resources that are available online and yeah that's all i have left for this video be sure to check out my own channel which is just Tolu duckworth where i explain my journey into medicine and my and some insight into what it's like to study at the university of oxford um and i'll leave all of that in the description box below but thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one bye